Thank you for choosing to watch my video on effective job interview strategies. I appreciate your taking the time and I hope you will find it of benefit. We are going to be reviewing a number of the key components to conducting a successful job interview from the perspective, of course, of the candidate. Research is key. Then you have this, what I call the screening interviews, the phone and Skype. Of course, the most important interview is the face-to-face. -face. Following up is crucial. What do you do when you get an offer? And then questions to ask and questions to answer. Research. You have to understand that employers are going to be researching you and therefore what you should do before you even start your job search in earnest is to check your internet presence. It's very important. You want to make sure that there's nothing out there that could hurt you. If you've published things on the internet that maybe you shouldn't have, if you can do it, take it down. I know that once you put something on the internet, it's, it's up forever. But you may have an opportunity to remove something. If someone has written something negative about you on the internet, be aware of it. There's nothing you can do about it. If it comes up in conversation, be mature. That's for the employer researching you. But now let's get to, the, to you researching the employer. As they say with real estate, everything is location, location, location. With interviewing, it's all about researching. You have to research the company. It's not enough to know what's on their website. You have to dig deeper. Google them. Research the interviewers. Find out everything you can about them. Their LinkedIn profile may or may not be enough. Google them. People hire people they like. People like people with whom they share something in common. So find out all you can about the interviewers. And look at the company's employees. You can do this on LinkedIn. Notice what you have in common with the employees and what you lack. Now, if you're getting an interview, you don't have to sweat this. You just need to be aware of it. So if you speak a foreign language and they don't, that may be something you want to bring up by pointing out the fact that you can open up their client pool or their customer pool to a new demographic, which they may not be reaching. On the other hand, if you see that they all have graduate degrees and you only have an undergraduate degree, well, they know that. They saw it on your resume. Don't sweat it. Just be aware of it. But the key is differentiation. And it all comes down to research. Because you have to differentiate yourself from your competition and you will not know who your competition is. So the best way to handle it is by asking really good questions and providing phenomenal answers that all show that you prepare well for meetings. Now let's get into screening. You're going to get a phone call. It's going to, they're going to say to you, I'm calling from XYZ company. You submitted your resume for the whatever position. I'd like to set up a time to speak with you. It's that subsequent phone call that we're talking about right now. So you've set up a time and they're going to screen you. And it's probably going to be a lower level HR staffer because all they're going to do is go down a checklist to make sure that you actually are qualified for the job and they may want to do it on the spot 
my suggestion would be just to say, listen, uh, I have to apologize. I'm in the middle of something. Can you call me back in 15 minutes? That way there I can focus on you and we'll both uh, be, be happier or something like that. Then you've got 15 minutes and you can get yourself prepared. You pull out your resume. But let's go down the entire list. Let's assume that this is the real interview, screening interview, and not the preliminary to set up. Get dressed. If you're in your pajamas, you're not going to feel professional, so get dressed. Have a mirror in front of you. It's very important because the only thing that they have to go on in a phone interview is your tone of voice. And your tone of voice is more important than what the words that you're actually saying. I'll give you a quick example. I was checking references. In addition to being a career counselor, I'm also an executive recruiter, and on occasion I have to check references. And someone said to me, yeah, worked here about five years, good employee. That was not a good statement. If they had said, yeah, worked here five years, they were a good employee, that's a good statement. Same words, but different tone of voice. You want to make sure that you are, that your tone of voice is complementing the words you're saying, reinforcing the words you're saying. And the way to do that is very simple. Have a mirror in front of you and smile because you cannot sound negative if you're smiling. You can sound sarcastic, so watch out, but you can't sound negative. Have your resume in front of you. You're going to be a little nervous. You don't want to misspeak. You should have at least a couple questions to ask. In a phone interview, you can't ask all the questions you might want to ask. But have a couple of questions, and when we get towards the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what questions to ask. Listen. It's the most important thing. Because interviewers, maybe not in the phone interview, but it does happen, are going to talk to you when they're going to tell you too much. They're actually going to tell you what they want to hear. But if you're not paying attention, you're going to miss it. So listen. And this brings us now to the Skype interview for the background, the set, and the stage. A Skype interview, it's not just tone of voice. It's also your appearance. It's your body language. But you can set the stage behind you. And this is what you would see if we were to do a Skype interview. And what would you ask me? You'd ask me about my books. It's come up. I once had an interview and I couldn't believe it. The fellow said to me, oh, I see you like David McCullough. And I said, how do you know that? Well, he recognized the books. If you look just above my head, to the left of the screen, on my right, your left, you'll see a very thick book it's in blue. It's Truman. He recognized that. And we got into a conversation regarding David McCullough and his books. And we agreed on some things. We disagreed on others. That was fine. And he hired me. I got the gig because he liked me. We shared something in common. So you want to set the stage, the background, in order to expand the conversation. David McCullough was not going to come up in this interview. But it did because he saw the books. So if you have a hobby, I've had career counseling clients and we've set the stage with hobbies, collections, things that are just, you're going to become more of a person and not just a professional. They're going to get an idea of who you are, what you like, and what you are like. It works. Set the stage. Now we come to the face-to-face -face interview. And I hope that I have to apologize to most of you because you should know all of this. But if you don't, you'll learn now. You have to get, you have to dress professionally. 
You have to err on the side of conservative. Dress one above whatever you would be wearing on the job. Do not wear anything scented. No perfume, no cologne, no scented aftershave. If the person, and believe me, this happens, if the person who you are interviewing with, the person who's interviewing you, literally cannot stand to be in the room with you because of the odor, it's not going to be a successful interview. And along with dress, be cognizant of your electronics. Have everything turned off. I cannot begin to tell you the number of times employers have called me and said, thanks for sending this person over. Their electronics were beeping the entire time, humming, buzzing, ringing. The person couldn't find them. They couldn't turn them off. It was a disaster. Shut everything off. Yes, you need to take notes. Don't use your cell phone. Paper and pencil. Old school. That way there you won't be distracted. If you're using your cell phone, and maybe you're very good at it. Maybe you can write quicker with your cell phone than you can with a pen and paper. But if you get an email message, you're going to be distracted. And they're not going to know if you're texting your friends or taking notes. So just take notes the old-fashioned way. If you are late for an interview, you won't get the job. And they may not even meet with you. You should plan to arrive 10, 15 minutes early, no more than that. With one exception, if it's very bad weather out, then you'll get a pass. Otherwise, arrive in plenty of time, consider traffic, but don't go into the building until 15 minutes before the scheduled time. And for the record, and I get into this in more detail, of course, with my career counseling clients, the interview doesn't begin when you sit down at the table. It begins when you walk in the door. And that's the front door of the building. Don't arrive more than 15 minutes early. Be very nice to the receptionist. If the receptionist likes you, you're ahead of the game. And I can almost guarantee that your competition is going to go in and say, Hi, my name is Jane. I'm here to speak with Nancy. And the receptionist will say, One moment, please. She'll pick up the phone, call Nancy, say, Jane is here. You all know the routine. You be different. You go over and you say the same thing, but you do one additional thing. Yeah. Shake her hand. All day long, the receptionist sees professionals shaking hands. Nobody shakes hands with her. With her. Differentiate yourself. Be different. Treat her like a professional. Offer to shake her hand. Your body language is key. And your first interaction with the person you're going to be meeting with is crucial. You stand up. You look them straight in the eye. You say, thank you very much for inviting me in for an interview. And you give them a firm handshake. Everything you do, all of your body language, your posture, your handshake, how you hold your head, what you're doing with your hands, everything has to send a clear message of confidence. It's especially true if you're an older worker. If you're worried about age discrimination, you don't want to look like the person's grandparent. Posture, strength, in your, with your gait, everything sends the message you want to send. No negativity. If they ask you, and we'll get into this in more detail, but if they ask you a question which requires a negative answer. What are your weaknesses? What was your biggest failure? Always end on a positive. You don't ever want the last statement they hear from you to be negative. Be honest. If you lie on your resume, or if you lie in a job interview, you can be fired for cause. 
period. Nothing to discuss. Never lie. Listen. Said it before. Now I'm going to go into a little bit more detail. Let's just say you are applying for a business development job at a real estate company. And for 10 minutes, they talk to you about all the problems they're having with commercial real estate. And then they say, so tell us about your business development experience. You weren't paying attention. You are stronger with residential real estate business development than commercial. So you focus on residential. You're not getting the job. They want to hear about commercial. If you were to have started with your commercial, not to downplay it, say, you know, this is what I've done with commercial real estate and make it look good. And then say, but I also want you to know that I have the residential side of it and my results have been just as, if not more impressive. That's fine. You've told them about your residential, but you've also told them about what you that what they want to hear. If you're only talking about residential, you're not getting the job offer. There are a lot of people who are very modest and do not like talking about themselves, and that is a great character trait, but not for a job interview. You've got to brag. So what I suggest is when they ask you a question, and they will, it'll be one of the first ones, something like, tell us about uh, your business development experience, tell us about some successes you've had, whatever. You say, I'm going to answer your question, but I want to clarify something. I have worked with a lot of great people, but I'm going to focus today on solo projects or my contribution to the team effort. But I just want you to know that I know that I have benefited in my career from a lot of from working with a lot of good people. So just so you know, there is a we behind the I. And now you can brag all you want. They ask you a question, give them a direct answer. You don't want to talk yourself out of a job offer, and it happens. So direct answers, be succinct. And you can always say, listen, I can go into more detail if you would like. And if they want, then fine. If they don't, move on. And at the end, ask for the job. This does not mean, may I please have the job. What it means is, you say something like, I want to thank you profusely. You always thank people for bringing you in for the interview and at the end of the interview. And then you just say, what's the next step? You know, I'm more intrigued now than I was when I arrived. Or I want to reassure you that I am very interested in this position. If you try, you can try a little bit of humor if you, depending on the mood of the uh, meeting. You can say, you know, if you were trying to dissuade me, you didn't succeed. I am really interested in this job. What's the next step? And then you move on. You thank them, you leave. Now, follow up. You have to. You have no choice in the matter. You have to send them an email. Everybody you met with gets a different email, but you thank each of them. If you have to confirm or correct something or clarify something, that's fine. You weren't lying in the interview. You made a mistake and you corrected it immediately in the thank you email. Maybe they asked you for an example of something, and the minute you left the building, you realized you had a better example. You can give them that in the thank you email. But you don't want to make the email too long, and you have to personalize it. And you personalize it by taking good notes and remembering what you believe was important for that individual interviewer. Was it a question that they asked you? Was it a question that you asked them? Or was it a discussion that they had with you or with their colleagues? You want them to know in that email that you were listening, you heard what they said, and you got it. If you just send a generic email thanking them for the interview, and it could be anything from dog catcher to president, it's meaningless. You're not going to get an offer. 
Some people like to send a handwritten thank you. Just send it to the person who organized the meeting. It's a nice touch. Very generic. You don't have to get into any details about anything. Thank you. Looking forward. That's basically it. And if you have a lot of my career counseling clients say, yeah, but I have lousy handwriting. Print. I have lousy handwriting. I print thank you cards. There's no problem with that. In most cases, they're probably going to want to do a background check. They cannot do the background check until they get your social security number. And never give out a social security number until you have a conditional offer of employment. You don't know these people. You don't want to be a victim of identity theft. So if they insist on getting your social security number in advance of a conditional letter of employment or offer of employment, say no. I've done it. You don't want your identity stolen. It's dangerous. Don't do it. Now, if they're going to find something out in the background check that's negative, tell them ahead of time. As long as they're not surprised, it won't, shouldn't be a problem. You've told them what you did. You told them why. You explained everything. It's a negative, obviously, by definition. Tell them what you learned from it. Why does this make you a better person, a better employee? Look them straight in the eye. Again, maybe they haven't checked your internet presence beforehand. They should have. Maybe they didn't. So make sure that after the interview, if you haven't done it, double check your internet presence. You can do that by Googling yourself. Just make sure you put your name in quotation marks. And also you can set up a Google alert. And that way there, if your name ever appears on the internet, you'll know about it. Get them any requested information sooner rather than later. And then don't wait to send the e thank you email. In the thank you email, if you're supposed to get them something, say, and I look forward to getting you the information you requested, but say what that information was, you know, within 24 hours, 48 hours, whatever the time frame is, because you don't want them to think you have forgotten. And that's also a good way to follow up subsequently. So you can send the day of the interview the thank you email. You can say, I will get have the information for you tomorrow. And first thing tomorrow morning, or first day, you know, the next day, you uh, first thing the next day, you send them the information. It's a way to show that you follow up. Now, if it's something simple and you've got it, don't play games. Just include it in the email. Don't be a pest. You ask them at the end of the interview, what's the next step? They said they'd be in touch in two weeks. Two weeks later, you don't hear anything. Wait another week. They said, call us in two weeks. In two weeks' time, you call them. They don't call you back. You left the message. They don't call you back. You got your answer. Maybe. So what do you do? You send a thank you rejection letter. And if you go to my LinkedIn profile and click on my posts, you will find an article I wrote about the thank you rejection letter. Read the comments. There are people who confirm that they followed the advice and they got job offers. It's a very simple letter. So they told you two weeks, you waited three weeks, now you're sending a letter. Old school, piece of paper, envelope, stamp, you mail it. I want to thank you again for having interviewed me for the whatever position. While I assume that you have decided to go with a different candidate, and I am obviously disappointed, I want to let you know how much I appreciate 
the opportunity. I wish you and your new hire the very best. I look forward to hopefully seeing you again in the future. Sincerely yours. Something like that. People have gotten jobs as a result of sending the thank you rejection letter. Not necessarily the job they applied for, but other jobs. Because the employer liked their style. This shows you're classy. It says something about how you market yourself. It says something about customer service, customer relations. You are having a job interview. You are marketing yourself. You are the product. How you sell yourself, how you market yourself, how you represent yourself tells the employer how you will market, sell, and represent them. And it doesn't matter what your job is. Everybody is in sales and marketing and customer service. Lastly, references. Three professional references. They should ideally be past supervisors. Don't give out your references until you know that you're interested in the job. And also until you have spoken to them because you want to make sure they're available. If they're not available, the employer is going to say, gee, why didn't this person call me back? Maybe they don't like the candidate. But they may be sick or they may be out of away on a trip, maybe out of the country. So just say to the employer, you will get them references hopefully by the next day you want to make sure they're in town and that's totally legitimate and then you send them the information the person's name their phone number their time zone if it's different from yours <coughs> excuse me and a little blurb about how you know them but the key is not only to confirm that the reference is available but also to prime them, to prepare them, to let them know what they should focus on, to remind them of whatever it is that you have done in the past so they'll know what to say, what to focus on. If you did well, you got the offer, you can make one counter offer. This is not a process that goes on for years. All right? Prepare a budget. Make sure you can talk about your needs. This is what I need and prove it to them. Don't forget to consider benefits. Salary is one thing, but if their offer is less than what you need, look at the benefits because maybe they're going to be paying for things that you're currently paying for and therefore you can take less. And I always work with my career counseling clients of finding the middle ground. And usually employers are willing to compromise because they want a body in the chair. They're fed up with the process. They want to hire you. And if it's only going to cost you an additional, cost them an additional few thousand dollars, it's worth it. Lastly, do not resign your current position until you have the job offer in hand. They say they, you know, sign at the bottom and you're hired. Until you have that letter, don't resign. Now, questions to ask. I like this question. I really like this question. Why did you want to interview me? Think of what this question does. It forces the interviewer to think about you in a positive way. Now, they may have said at the beginning, we like this, we like that. So don't ask the question. They've already told you. But if they haven't, ask the question. Now, the mood of the interview from this point over is going to be positive. Now you want to show your researching skills. And everybody asks, and during the interview, you're going to ask questions in response to statements that they make. And you're going to ask questions about the job description. And that's all fine and good. But that's what everybody does. You want to differentiate yourself. 
So go to their Twitter account and see who they're following and ask why. And most of the time, the people who are interviewing you will not have a clue. Why are we following this person, this company, this entity? Ask. They'll say, we don't know. You'll say, fine. You'll move on to your next question. But the important thing is, is that after the interview, they're going to go back and ask whomever, one of the bosses, you know, June was in for an interview and she asked why we're following the British embassy. She wanted to know if we're planning on expanding into Europe. Are we? And the boss will say, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I want to meet this person because she prepared very well for this interview, and I like that. Press. You research the company, you found out things. This happened with me. I had a job interview, and I asked about a press release. I said, I saw online that you issued a press release saying you were starting a new project a couple of years ago. Whatever happened with that? I'm meeting with the director and the assistant director of the agency. They had both been there for many, many years, and the director looked at me and said, Bruce, I don't have a clue what you're talking about. And I pulled out the press release, and I showed it to her, and she read it. She said, I never saw this. I never approved this. She then gave it to the assistant director, who said the same exact thing, and they're both smiling. They're not angry. They're just confused. And I thought, okay. Okay. And I'm smiling too. And the director looked at me and asked, you know, can I keep the press release? And I said, sure. Not a problem. If they don't know the answer to a question, that's okay. If you don't know the answer to a question, it's not okay. Find the LinkedIn profile of the person who currently has or last had the job you're applying for. And compare that to the job description. Say, you know, if this is true, of course. Say, I noticed that on David's resume, uh, LinkedIn profile, he listed five responsibilities. On the job description, you only list three of those, but you've added three new ones. Why? Now, that's a question they should be able to answer. Most people ask the question, why is this job available? That sounds gossipy. So what happened? It's not in your business. What is your business is this question. What would you like to see continued and what would you like to see done differently? What did the last person or the person who currently holds the position do that you want to see continued and what would you like to see done differently? Employers will like that. Now, the next two questions are in bold because these are the ones that you can ask in a telephone or on a Skype interview. How will I be able to make my life easier, even to make your life easier? If I get the job, how will I be able to make your life easier? Write down the answer. That may be the focus of your thank you email. You have to decide what the most important thing is to focus on. The next question, who succeeds here? I am flabbergasted by the responses. Some employers don't know how to answer. What do you mean who succeeds here? You know, who makes a good employee? Who lasts long? They don't know how, a lot of them don't know how to answer. You're going to learn more from how they answer the question than from what they actually say. How long does it take them to come up with something? What you're looking for is corporate culture because you want to make sure you're a good fit. And they'll get that. And they'll say, okay, this person wanted to make sure that we were not wasting their time and they weren't wasting our time. It's a good question to ask. Now, lastly... I had one career counseling client who swore by, and it didn't take him long to get a job, and he asked the question. He would always ask, is there 
anything about my candidacy that troubles you that I can respond to. I don't like that because it's a negative. But the idea appeals for me. So if you're comfortable, you can ask at the end, is there anything you would like me to clarify? That's neutral. It's not negative. It's not positive. Think about it. Now, questions to answer. First, it's pretty much guaranteed that at some point they're going to review with you the job description just to make sure there was, were no mistakes made. But they're also going to ask other questions, obviously. And you can prepare. I had one career counseling client who had I think it was 75 questions. He read a lot of books, and he had 75 questions and the answers. And before he came to me, he had gone on his first job interview in 20 years. He was obviously overprepared, but he was shocked. Not one of the 75 questions was asked. So he came to me, and I gave him the questions I'm going to give you, and they also were not asked. There are no guarantees here. Accept the fact that you have to be prepared to think on your feet. You have to know how to answer a question that you're not prepared for. And we worked on that, and he was prepared, and he got the job, or a subsequent job. These are the questions that I like, and that I think employers should ask. How did you prepare? How would you prepare for the interview? They want to know if you're somebody who is going to embarrass them in a meeting or make them proud. What did you do? Tell them about the website. Tell them about the Google search. Tell them about Twitter. If I hire you, where will my company be in five years? Now, you can't be presumptuous. You have to know what the company's been doing for the last five years if they've been around for five years. So you can talk about, I see a trend. Takes work, you gotta prepare. I see a trend over the last five years and I can see how I can contribute to the continuation of that trend. The safest route though is to say, well, can't predict the future, but I can tell you what's happened with my career and how over the past five years you've developed as a professional, how you contributed to your employer or employers over the past five years, and how because of your contribution they were able to grow. What do you know about us? It may seem like a, a, a stupid question to ask, but you cannot believe the number of people who when they are given the opportunity to ask questions, the first question they ask is, so tell me, what is it you do here? It sounds crazy, but it happens. You do not want to regurgitate their website. You want to analyze the website. Let them see that you've thought about it. You are, I know you offer three services, A, B, and C. I'm kind of curious why you don't offer D. I've also found out through my research that you've started some new projects and you promote them every year, maybe one or two projects. I like that. You're advancing. You're growing. You're taking on challenges, maybe some risks. You want to show that you have thought about what you've learned. You just don't want to tell them the facts. You want to give them your personal analysis. Why do you want to work here? Don't praise them. It doesn't mean anything. You know, you're such a great company. You've got uh, uh, such a phenomenal reputation. The only type of praise that I would suggest you offer is if they are mission-driven, you say, I like a company that's mission-driven, and your mission to do whatever resonates with me, and tell them why. 
but then give them something concrete. For example, I notice that your leadership is constantly receiving community service awards. I like that. I like a company that is community minded. But what I really like is the fact that based on the LinkedIn profiles of your staff, you've got a lot of people who have been with you for a long time and you promote from within. And that is something I am looking for. So you've given them a practical reason for why you want to work there. And you've told them you're looking for a long-term commitment, which is something that is very good for older workers, older candidates to do. What are your weaknesses? Everybody has a weakness. I probably spend most of my time with my career counseling clients working on weaknesses. Not to correct them, but how to present them. You have to tell them what your weaknesses or weaknesses are, but one is usually good enough. And most importantly, how you control it. You can't go in and say, I'm no good at this and expect to get a job. You can, can say, I'm no good at doing this, but this is how I overcome the weakness and why I've gotten good at it. I may not enjoy doing it, but I'm good at it. What was your greatest failure? Same thing. You have to have a failure, but you have to tell them what you learned from the failure. That you knew to pull the plug so you didn't work wasting time and money. But that it was a learning experience and not a career ender. Everybody has had failures. You have nothing about which to be concerned. Why did you do something a certain way? They'll ask you about a project you worked on, and they may very well say, well, why did you do it this way and not that way? They don't care, and they may very well have done it, though they may very well do it the exact same way you do it. What they want to see is how you respond to criticism. Don't become defensive. Show that you're considering what they said. Take a few seconds. Think about it and then respond professionally. And the answer could be, you know what? We never thought of it. That could actually have saved us time and money and maybe ask them some questions about their implementation of it. So, you know, if that resulted in this, that, or the other thing, did it in your case, have a conversation. Show that you're open to learning new things and for to, and to doing things in different ways. Again, especially a good point for older workers because you don't want anybody to think that you're set in your ways. Why'd you leave your last jobs? Why are you looking to leave your current job? Don't be negative. Keep it short. Never be insulting. Take some time and there are emotions involved. But I have never had a career counseling client, or for that matter, a candidate for an executive recruiting client, leave without good, honest answers. Never lie. I have gotten jobs for people who were fired for stupidity, not criminality. And they've gotten jobs, as I said. They kept their explanations short. They told the truth. Everything was confirmed by their references. No problem. Everyone's entitled to make a mistake. Tell us about yourself. This is the one that gives a lot of people the most trouble. Do not summarize your resume. They've seen your resume. They know what's in it. Tell them about you as a person, but professionally. Give them an example of the impact that you have had on others. What is it that made you really proud and why? Talk to them about that type of scenario because you'll be passionate about it and your body language will exude passion and they'll know you're sincere and that this was really important to you. And it may not have been something that 
brought in a lot of money and helped the bottom line, but maybe it was something that helped someone. And if you're an older worker, talk, and if, if it's true, talk about how you mentored someone. And they went on to bigger and better. Let them know who you are as a person and not just as a professional. And again, everyone has these types of stories. I have never had a career counseling client leave me without knowing how to answer this question. Or, since it's not a question, to take advantage of the opportunity to tell the interviewers about them. Final thoughts. I like these two quotes. Remember them during your career. And maybe you won't find yourself in a situation where you'll be embarrassed, where you shoot yourself in the foot and don't get the promotion, where you get into trouble and you don't have anyone to help you get out of it. I want to thank you all profusely for having taken the time to listen to this video, to watch this video. I hope you found it of benefit. Feel free to email me or to call me. I provide everyone with a complimentary 15-minute consultation. I will be happy to work with you. I look forward to hearing from you, and I wish you the very best with your job search.